Okay, we'll call our meeting to order. Would everyone please stand, face the flag, and join us as we say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you for being here. It's a special meeting with the uh, with the intent of moving forward on our superintendent hire. We've only got two things on our agenda this evening. Uh, the first one being the consideration of the cost, the level of service, and then our main part of our meeting, which deals with the process of hiring. So I would look for a motion from someone to approve the agenda as shown. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as shown. Katie on the motion. Second. Seconded by Anna. Any other discussion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. No scheduled presenters. Uh, public input. Thank you for coming this evening. Um, we're going we're gonna to have a unified front in dealing with this. We intend to make as many people a part of the process as can, but ultimately it lands in our lap as board. So um, does anyone have anything for the district on the public input section? Anything that they'd like to speak to? We're closed on that. Action items under new business consideration to approve the cost and level of service from the MSBA. Um, we got this handout some time ago about the process, about the costs involved with the process. Um, it, it runs anywhere from $1,000 up to $7,000, depending on the level of service that we want or need. Um, at our previous meeting, we decided that we would uh, retain our MSBA to be our, our leaders in this process. Some of you with a history know that, uh, which includes me, that we've had four different processes for our superintendent, this being the fourth. So this is the process that today is the most desirable and the one that uh, we were encouraged to use. So that's the direction we'll go. So I'd like to open some discussion on the level of service that we feel we need as a board here. Um, I'll throw it out first. I'm in favor of the full superintendent search. I know it's our most expensive option, but we've done some <clears throat> some advanced work knowing that for sixty eight hundred dollars, um, that's a that's our best bang for the buck when we uh, when we've inquired as to other services and the cost of other services. So, on a personal level, I feel good with that, and I just. Uh, looking for input from others, I guess. Anyone? Well, I would concur. I, I think we spoke last meeting of just initially using MSBA, and then I think Katie, it was you, it was questioning what the co true cost was, and so yeah. that was laid out here for us. Uh, and I think there was some discussion around the level of commitment from the MSBA and what we're getting in, in comparison to using outside source. And that this is really quite beneficial for the, the expense. So I guess my question, and it could be directed towards you, is what the major difference is, is between the limited superintendent search yeah, and the so full superintendent cool. search? Mm -hmm. Because um, I'm just not, from, from this sheet, I see limited search is listed in the bottom one and not in the second to <clears throat> bottom one. And I'm not sure what that all entails or what the differences are between those two tiers because I, the way I look at it is if we can save the $2,600, um, $2, that could save us a program or something down the line if we were having to look at budget cuts or something like that. So I guess that's my whole thing is where the difference is between, I agree we need one of these top two. 
um, to do this, but I'm curious at what the difference is. Yes. So in your yes, on the table there is a, like an inverted German, and that will kind of give you the breakdown of the limited. Um, so that would include the facilitated planning meeting, um, which basically we're going to do tonight. Um, advertising the vacancy, receive the applications and manage the applications. MSBA do that for you. Conduct in-house review of applications, initial verification, etc. Uh, facilitate school, uh, school board candidate selection meeting. So um, you select your finalists, scheduling the interviews, um, and then assisting with preparing interview questions and scheduling the interviews. Um, we would not do any interview training or uh, be on site at all for the actual interviews. Whereas with the full search, we conduct interview training, develop the first second round interview questions and schedules, advertise the vacancy, other options if need be. Facilitate stakeholder related activities. So if you wanted to have this online survey, one-on-one -on -one interviews and queuing engagement, um, that would only be with the full service. That would not be with the limited service. And then also um, being on site for the first and second round of interviews and then working um, to develop the news releases to the public regarding the process of the search. Okay. What's the difference of the advertise, advertising the vacancy, the expanded options and the additional options? I mean, would there be more so options on the advertising? I don't know. If you wanted to, so we'll do the MA, um, Minnesota School Boards Association website, um, also on the Apple Track system that we use, um, the MASA website. Ed Post, um, North Dakota has a consortium very similar to Ed Post, and then um, South Dakota also has one. If you wanted to go above and beyond and do, you know, like in the Pioneer Press or Star Tribune, things like that, that would be additional costs um, beyond both so of those. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Anybody have any other questions? If not, I would look for a motion to approve something. Well, I'll make a motion for the full superintendent. Okay, Bill has made a motion to use the full superintendent ser search. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? Second. I will second it. I believe I can. So, motion by Bill, seconded by Bob, to accept the full service. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. Uh, no, I want to have some more discussion. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, how how important is it to us that the MSBA people? be on site for our interviews or that we have this interview training. I was going to ask that question too. I mean, what, what, from your perspective, what benefit does that provide us to have MSBA on site during the interview process? We can help facilitate the moving people around for you um, and answering questions if they have questions. So it frees up your, um, yourself so that you're not involved with having to try to move people around. Um, so if you have multiple people going at one site, at one time we can help facilitate getting people from point A to point B. Um, and then also with the interview question, um, helping you create interview um, questions that align with your hiring criteria, and then making sure that everyone's on the same page as for consistency of information um, regarding would, those interview would you questions. Would still do that with the limited search to create the interview questions? We'll just do the initial. Um, the first round. First round. round. Right. Okay. One of the so, other things that I would add is that often on the night of an interview, someone has a question. Uh, one of you has a question. What about this? What about that? Uh, can we ask the candidate this? Something all of a sudden comes up. One of the things that's happening within these searches is there's getting to be more and more legal requirements and things you can do and can't do. Uh, we've had some experience at that, you know, plenty of experience at it. And so, uh, if you happen to, you know, stray into the wrong question or do something, and we, we, you, we often find that the night of the interview, there are things going on, uh, or someone comes late, how do we handle this? 
it allows you, the board members, to focus on one thing, and that's to evaluate the candidates and not have to think about, gee, I wonder if this is okay or that's okay. We'll be here to tell you if you can or can't do something or can or can't ask something or say something. So it just seems like during the during the night of the interview, something usually comes up and we make sure that you know we're on we're on track with all those kinds of things. Do you actually sit in on the interview or you're just there? We're in the audience. In the audience. In the audience. Taking notes. Um, mm -hmm. Then afterwards, as you go to, um, you know, consider the candidates, you might ask us, what did that answer mean? You know, do you think that's important? And we might come back with, yeah, we often see people giving that kind of an answer or, you know, here's one thing you want to remember when someone gives that answer. And so in addition to uh, the difference between the full and the limited is the community engagement. So um, if you wanted to have Q&A as part of the second round of interviews, we will help facilitate and moderate um, the Q&A uh, with the public and the candidates. Other questions? We have a motion on the floor and a second to um, to use the full superintendent search. Is there any other discussion? All in favor of using the full superintendent search, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, that passes by a four to one measure. Okay. Item two is the MSBA initial planning of the superintendent search agenda item. We have two people from uh, MSBA um, here. I would, would like them to introduce themselves and maybe just a brief background and we'll jump in. All right. I'm Amy Taylor of the Minnesota School Boards Association. I'm in my 13th year and prior to joining MSBA, I was in the private sector and did human resources for a variety of different companies and we're from manufacturing to wireless to um, a remote casino. My name is Bruce Klein. I'm a retired superintendent of uh, 19 years. I was also a principal for nine years and um, am now doing some uh, consulting both for Southeast Service Cooperative and for uh, Minnesota School Boards Association. All my 19 years as superintendent were down here in the southeast corner. So pretty familiar with the, uh, with, with the folks <coughs> in the schools around this area. Okay, thank you. Um, you'll be leading in this, so would you like to jump in? And we'll begin? jump in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we're going to go to finding the right superintendent booklet. And if you turn to the very first page, so we'll walk through part of this, and then there's some other forms that are in a blue folder. Um, we'll kind of be switching back and forth between those two things. The first one at the very bottom is talking about the do's and don'ts of hiring a superintendent. The first things are do determine the school district's needs first, do arrive, agree to arrive at consensus, take enough time to conduct the search, and make certain all board members are up during the process. And some of the don'ts are don't hire the best the worst, don't overlook those already in the district, don't um, let a consultant identify the best superintendent for the school district, and don't give away the school board's right to select a superintendent. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more, more about those as we go through the process. And if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask them along this way. Right. May I just throw something out here? Uh, we invited department heads, uh, EA representatives, and um, being that our board is, uh, is not overly experienced so far, we'll learn a lot by the time this process is over, I felt it incumbent that we uh, that we invite folks here, and I don't want them to sit here for two hours and then just say what just became of this meeting, or and why weren't we involved? Could you at least speak to that a little bit for us? Yeah. So tonight is kind of laying the groundwork and getting a lot of confirmation on the timeline and those types of things. Um, there will be a opportunity to provide some feedback, um, but then going forward, once that timeline is finalized, there will be some more engagement of um, stakeholder opportunities with the online survey and um, open forums uh, asking questions etc and that will take place in february um, so there will be an opportunity for involvement and we're actually going to uh, some of the department heads and leaders we will interview one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. 
So you will have a chance to uh, uh, sit down with, with a member of our staff and we have a set, a set of questions uh, that we will ask each of you the same questions and uh, plus get any uh, comments or input that you want to provide. So uh, this is an important part of it to get your feedback. And then, like I said to a couple people, if you leave here tonight, tonight is a lot of work for the board. But if you leave here tonight thinking, well, I didn't get really get to say all that I wanted to say, those opportunities are coming up, rest assured. Thank you. All right, so if you want to turn to page one of the booklet. You're in the beginning of the search, but you're kind of already further down the path that you've already selected a consultant to work with. And so I'm looking under the budget. Things to keep in mind would be um, the application or applicant expenses if you are going to pay anything. And these are things just to start thinking about going forward. And when you bring people in for interviews, if you want to pay anything regarding your travel, and then if you choose to do site visits for your loan um, finalists, any um, costs that would be associated with your travel going to those um, other schools. Then looking on page two is a timeline. As you can see, it says one to six months. We greatly condensed that down. So in your packets, there should be a revised timeline, I believe. Somebody might have discussed it a little bit with you last week. But this one is in your packet. I should mention there was a there's an extra copy of the information there. So tonight you took action. Tonight we're going to be working on setting the timeline, starting to develop the hiring criteria, the search process, um, stakeholder involvement, et cetera. And then ideally, um, we would like to open the online survey on the 24th and have that open through February 7th. And then on the 28th, which is next Monday, that is where the board will be taking action to approve a lot of the things that we talk about tonight, such as the hiring criteria, um, salary information, the brochure, those types of things and then the week on February 11th through the 15th um, that is when uh, Bruce talked about facilitating the community listening sessions and the one-on-one -on -one interviews um, we'd like, we're proposing that that take place at that time and then the February 19th meeting that's when the interview training and development of the interview questions for the first round will take place and then the 25th would be the deadline so all applications would be due at midnight or 11.59 on the 25th and then on the 26th um, MSBA consultants will look at the hiring criteria that you've established and then the pool of applicants that have come in who's actually completed and submitted full applications and then go through that and do some preliminary screening and then on the 4th of March the board would have the opportunity to determine who they'd like to interview and so depending on how many applicants actually apply will determine um, how many interviews that you want to offer and then March 7th to the 9th you do your first run of interviews and then March 13th um, you'll be conducting your reference checks and hold your second run of interviews and after the second round of interviews you would select your loan finalists and if you decided you do a site visit and then the 15th or 22nd negotiate the employment contract the 25th approve the employment contract and July 1st is when the new superintendent would start so that's kind of the timeline that's been laid out. Okay. Any questions or Any feedback on that? How does that look to you? Concise. <laughs> <laughs> um, developing hiring criteria no. is on this evening's agenda. Yes. Yes, it is. Can you expand on that just a little bit? Or yep. is that something to be dealt with a little bit later? So there's a, a list of about 21 different items we'll have the board and then um, we'll, we'll hand those out you don't have you don't have those yet okay. oh the board actually has them um, oh okay uh, right. yes okay they do. Yeah. Right. so we'll walk through that and then as you talked about your wanting uh, participation so I do have copies um, for those that are in the audience if you'd like to have them complete those also we can collect those and then uh, we can look and see this is what the board said this is what um, the audience said and see where things line, a lot of times they're very close together as to uh, what are the preferred hiring criteria. And ideally, if we could walk away with four to six items that you would think would be your ideal things that you'd like to see in your next superintendent, 
then we can add those to the brochure um, then bring to you for your next meeting on the 28th. We can't just say all of the above, no. <laughs> You can't say all of the above. <laughs> There's not room. <laughs> Other questions or comments? Um, as far as the, the process is concerned, it's uh, essentially the deadline is uh, February 25th. How do you feel based on your uh, past experience, six weeks? Six weeks? We've seen them as short as four weeks. So six weeks is um, a very reasonable period of time to post that the vacancy. Mm -hmm. For people who might want to know where we are on the curve, are, are, um, there's always lots of openings. Are we uh, are we ahead of the game just a little bit? Or I would say so? you're kind of like in the front half of the, the mix of things. Um, so you're in that kind of, I'll say, first wave of postings. And then once those... Uh, positions have been finalized then depending on if they're current superintendents there may be some um, round two then for those openings coming through okay yep. so Barbara that was a good segue we're actually going to go to number three page three <laughs> and um, talked a little bit about the stakeholder involvement <clears throat> and the, in your packet is a survey in the blue folder and if you would like to take a couple of minutes just to kind of look that over, we are proposing that um, to put this online. And so on the 24th, to have it open to the public uh, for anyone who'd like to fill it out. And then that would be open until February 7th. And then the summary of information, once that's done, will be sent back or presented to the board um, for your information also to help you through the process. So again, very similar to um, information that we're going to be collecting today, is looking for those areas of expertise, um, the specialized skills, and then also personal characteristics. And then there is a um, text box for some comments also. If something was missing, they felt was very important, they could also ask that into um, the, the open form text box. Is this something that could be like a link? Um, sent to yes. all the parents we will like actually, via email or something so that it just makes it easier yes. if you get more responses yep so we will have um there will be hard copies <coughs> available so if someone wanted a hard copy and then we will also send a link to the district so you could post it on your website or you or could forward it into an email okay. however you um, decide that you want to get that information out yes So this also includes business owners and just community members. How would we reach those individuals more than likely? Or is it just the website, the newspaper? And we can um, help craft PSA announcements with your local media, um, so we can get information out that way. If you have a local radio station, we can send out information to local radio station um, and newspaper. I mean, there's the newspaper. I'm just trying to think of how much time we're going to actually have in the newspaper. So, the 24. This is when we have the editor here. Mm. It's Monday. So, if we're posting it on the 24 of January. Right, Thursday. The day that, well, basically the papers out that day. Yeah, it would help us to know when are the newspaper dates. So when would it actually hit the paper? It probably wouldn't hit the paper till the thirty first. Right. It needs to be <clears throat> information needs to be doled out to the paper by noon on Tuesday or Monday. By Monday the twenty eighth. Okay. So. <laughs> that we would have that first newspaper and just going through the seventh, which is posting the second newspaper print. It's every two weeks? 
every week. With every week. Oh, every week. But we're missing the first one. Oh, okay. Because the 24th is already in the cramp. Yeah. So then we got the 31st and then the 7th. Okay. So do you... Well, I'm just wondering... Well, it gives it one week. Are you wanting to extend the deadline? Is that what you're wanting? For the Possibly. survey? For the survey? You know, or maybe through the weekend. What falls on the weekend? Does that... Does that mess up everything? Do it. That should be okay. That should be a problem. Yeah. Adjust that to the ten. To the ten. Good observation. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, um, as I said, we'll do. Uh, we can work on PSA announcements for the radio. Um, do announcements for the paper. Monday is the deadline, so we'll make sure that we get it in uh, before on the 28th, and then we'll adjust the timeline to close on the 10th versus the 7th, and then we'll also have cop hard copies available at the district office if somebody would like to request hard copy, and hopefully um, the live link then on your website, and then if you want to send it out by whatever communication. Then the next thing is looking at the calendar um, for those community staff um, in district sessions to take place. We said the 11th through the 15th, um, if we could narrow down in one to two days. Um, districts have chosen sometimes to do one day with two of us in the district, and that way one can go one way and one can go the other. Um, other districts have chosen to do two days with one person. Um, so we could do the 11th, two people, the 12th, the 13th, or 14th, or the, the 15th. Just trying to figure out what would work best for your district um, to make sure that we're having opportunities for staff and community to have opportunities to come to those listening sessions. Um, this is So this is the group listening sessions where we can um, do a, a before morning school session, an after school session for staff, and we can do a, coffee session in the community, you can be in the library, whatever is most convenient for the community and the staff, we can adjust our schedules to fit those needs. So that would be something that we would need you to help massage which day or days work best for you and what times you would like us to do. And that's something that doesn't have to be decided today. That can be mulled over and then the decision can be made on the 28th at the next meeting. So then that way you can have an opportunity to have feedback from the staff regarding which day um, so there might be a book fair or something going on in the school that you don't want to run against um, trying to compete to have people come to those opportunities. Good Valentine's Day in there. Oh, yes. <laughs> what, would, what would typically occur at a, um, when you're facilitating and doing the community listening? Can you give maybe an example of what might happen? Yep. So we have five questions that we ask everyone so that we're consistently asking the same question of every group. Um, so we want to know what's good going on in the Cannon Falls Area School, um, what challenges might uh, be happening in the next year to three years, um, what qualities or characteristics that you would think the next successful superintendent should possess, um, what do you think the superintendent needs to know about the history um, regarding the district and the community, and if there's one thing that you could say to the next superintendent, what would it be? So having those opportunities to provide feedback regarding those questions. And somewhere in there is the opportunity to say what isn't being asked. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So we um, we can do sessions with community, staff, and students. So sometimes um, districts will have members of their student population involved also. So that's something to take into consideration. And that's kind of left to you folks and maybe with the principals there as to how extensive who we want to include and how broad you want it to be keeping in mind that scheduling and you know how many people you want to input if you have a couple people who would be good representatives of a group or something mm -hmm. we kind of leave that to you to determine who you want to have involved and if you fill the gym that's a pretty tough interview <laughs> <laughs> 
once more, if any if anybody has any questions Absolutely. of the audience, you will certainly respond Absolutely. and answer those. So, if you do have any questions, let us know. Okay, anybody got any questions so far? Moving on. And when I alluded to um, the Q and A piece, another opportunity for community involvement or audience participation is during the second round of interviews. Um, having people complete a audience input form. Again, looking at where are two strengths, the top two strengths of the individuals, and then what would be two opportunities for growth. So providing that feedback um, to the board um, would be available with the second round of interviews. So I think we we'll provide another opportunity. All right. So with, there's no other questions. We'll kind of get into the search qualifications um, survey for the superintendent. And as I talked about in the board packet, you have white copy, and then we'll pass out a copy also to everyone in the audience. Um, what we're looking for is that what you think are the top six items that you feel are the most important. And as Brenda alluded to, she wants all of them, but we can't have all of them, so you have to pick six. <laughs> and then on the very bottom there is um, a, a separate question, so you'll have six but she'll answer this bottom one as a yes or no regarding their previous experience as a superintendent. So if you just want to take the next few moments and work it through the worksheet. I actually have a quick question on the, on the timeline. Um, the stakeholder survey is open through the 10th. But we're determining and approving hiring criteria next week without having feedback from that survey. Is that how it's supposed to work? I mean, that feels like we're asking for input, but we're not going to actually use it. So what some boards do is they, if, um, we use it up front. Other boards will use it to help them craft the interview question. Okay. Because typically, the response is very close to what the board has decided okay. um, uh, as their hiring criteria. I think we haven't seen too many that are completely different from each other. Okay, thank you. So I guess with that question, staff and the department heads, at what place are they directly going to do this? That's what I was trying to understand. Okay, so um, if you actually want to <coughs> change and not do your hiring criteria will have to change possibly the depth the um so my initial understanding was that you were going to make the decision tonight regarding your preliminary hiring criteria and so that's what the timeline was based off but it can be changed um, so then we would look at either changing the application deadline if you wanted to incorporate time to include everything in actually finalizing to see how those feedback uh, responses align with what you're deciding today. Or you can use it as um, more as through the interview process to help craft those interview questions. I'm sorry, I, I was handing out the thing, but this is in regard to the leadership profile piece on the, and so we're just trying to kind of get an initial thing to put in the brochure. But official input is, is still in the a very much part of the process. But this is kind of preliminary so that we can complete the brochure. And I think that clarifies it a little bit for myself. So then you know we're putting together an idea. We're gonna get staff input, community input, and hopefully they're sort of in line. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. okay. When you feel you've completed it, fold it in half. Then I'll know that you're done and I'll pick it up. Thank you. 
All right, so is the board all done? Everyone's done with their yeah. Yeah, all of those. Okay, so yeah. in your packets is a draft start of a brochure, an advertising brochure. And this is a starting <coughs> point. <And> so um, <laughs> graphics can be changed, etc. Um, if you like. So right now. Just on the very front, it's just basically saying that the application deadline is the 25th. And then if you open it up, it talks about the search, the school district, points of pride, education program, facility highlights about the community, and then uh, leadership profile will go in here, and then whether or not uh, superintendent experience is preferred, required, and then your board. And then on the back side, it talks about the timeline. Um, Salary contract, financial highlights, screen, and application procedure. So opening up, um, looking at the school district points of pride. And I know this is your first time seeing this. This is your opportunity. This is your time to shine and let everyone know how great you are. You have a lot of great things going on in your school. Um, so you want to make sure that you're conveying that information out to all the potential applicants out there. Um, so we want to make sure that we haven't missed something. If there's something that you feel is important and that's not listed, we can move things around and add things. So look at those areas. So again, we're not having to make a final decision on this tonight. It's more of the starting point to start looking at that, um, seeing if there's things missing that you like to have added or things moved, etc. So kind of tying to this, um, one thing that we will need to know from you, the board, is who would you like to be the point of contact? Um, so if there's questions regarding the brochure or regarding something regarding the search. Um, is it someone maybe on the board or is it someone on staff that you would like to be the point of contact to have information go through? So for example, if for the brochure, the goal would be to approve this on Monday. So if you had questions or comments that um, you would like it all to go to, so me, let's say I happen to be on your board or on your staff and you say, Amy's going to be the point of contact, so get all information to her by Friday so that she can then send everything off to MSBA at once regarding the brochure. Or if there's a question regarding um, who do we need to get the link to for the survey, or who do we need to get to point of contact for your district newspaper or radio or things like that, we would have that person as the go-to person. You want a response to that? <laughs> <laughs> I would. Um, I, I think I think our HR person Lori would be the the best bet for us. She would she would be a clearinghouse, if you will. And she raised her hand, so she's 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 our person. <laughs> okay. So. All right. So we will have Lori as be the point of contact, and then that way she'll know who then she needs to reach out to get the information to if, if something would come up. Okay. Great. <clears throat> And then as, along those lines, also um, newspaper. So it sounds like it's a weekly paper. And Mondays are our deadline to get things in. So circling back around to this. So if you do have comments, suggestions regarding the brochure, um, please get those to Lori and on Friday by Friday and then we can get any updates um, that need to be done 
and incorporated for your next meeting on the 28th. One more copy. You got one? Okay. <coughs> Bruce is busy tabulating the results of the, uh, the qualification survey for us. So on the brochure, we talked about your points of pride. So quick discussion, and I should say quick, but a discussion about what do you think are challenges or concerns that a new superintendent may need to address coming within the next year to three years um, in your school? And this is just helping us to get an understanding um, better if we have questions like, um, is it, um, Increasing enrollment, de declining enrollment, budgeting, those types of things that we can address with. The declining enrollment in the elementary school, just from, we're just experiencing a dip. Given to the force. I'd like to get some input if you have any. <laughs> Mr. Hodges? Maybe just enrollment counseling. Sure. Yeah, it seems to go like for each graduating class. It's kind of. It says involving stakeholders. Please feel free. <laughs> what are we talking about? Challenges? Challenges. I think our budget, we wanted to increase our, our fund balance. I think retaining and recruiting teachers with proper salaries. Just to clarify that, so do you, do you mean the maintenance and? Correct. Okay. Years now, so you've seen the brochure. But what other great things are going on in your district that you want to highlight as um, positive things, strengths for your district? Sorry. <laughs> I think we have good community involvement. I know that we talked about that it helps speak to the foundation, but I know that businesses and community are very involved in the school. With budgeting, even with budget issues, they've been able to be innovative with their programming and place programming others at a high level.
teaching staff is phenomenal. The community really comes together to overcome any um, any obstacles like a program being eliminated or something we come up with the community comes together and the parents are really involved with helping to keep things going for the kids. <clears throat> well, I think, you know, academically we we tend to the scores are above the state average yeah. in math and reading and science. So really well academically. We also have state champions in speech. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Yeah. 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 So um, speech should be added in there. We have a very successful speech program. I think it should also be noted that <coughs> you do a lot with Google. So you run lean and you do a very good job of making sure that all of our programming, whatever that is, whether it's academic. Or whatever, all the way down to the Vincent Cooper's. Um, we all run the other room, and we still put out a little <laughs> We have very good extracurriculars at the elementary level as well. Lots of options for robotics and things that they can carry on into their middle school and high school years get started early we have great facilities here <laughs> I know I saw it when I, pulled it up and I was like wow <laughs> we have facilities to brag about and again that piggybacks on our community who has supported us several times <clears throat> in that endeavor so for our size there's very few that are better indoor and outdoor mm -hmm. It's a hard time for some of these people to speak for themselves. We have such great leadership in our departments, mm -hmm. as well as our, our EA, our staff, and uh, <coughs> and it makes our job just quite a bit easier because we've got a we've got a real unity in our community and in our school. And again, our our department heads from our um, bookkeeping, accounting to just facilities, to food service, to uh, our athletic department. Is that what that, on that blue sheet, there was something about leadership teams? Mm -hmm. Would you say that's kind of getting at what Bob just mentioned? Or is that a whole different topic? Yeah, de develop and direct an effective leadership team. Is, is that, that kind of what he's saying? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay. And, and you know, to develop and direct, um, it's one thing to have a lot of good people, but there's also a skill in bringing good people together and getting them to work as a team because a lot of good people can also want to go in different directions. And so, yeah, that's, I would say that's exactly what you've got there. Yeah. Anything else? Great. So. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Just about there. 
And Bruce is just about done. Oh. That's the final. All right, so I'll read the board first, and then I'll read the audience's second. So the top six were act, act with honesty in an ethical manner in dealings with the school board, staff, and community. Be a people person with proven abilities in human relations and communications. Be visible in the school district and accessible to the school board, staff, students, parents, and community. Delegate authority while maintaining accountability. Develop and direct an effective leadership team and then promote business and community involvement. And four felt that previous superintendent's experience was important. Okay. So. Did you get all that? One, three, four, five, six, seven, 19. <laughs> one, three, four, five, six, seven, and 19. And I can give you these back if you need yeah, a copy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then. Number one, I was also selected to act with honesty in an ethical manner. So both thought that was important. Um, both thought develop and direct an effective leadership team was important. Both felt be a people person with proven abilities in human relations and communications um, was important. And then we have effectively mediate and accommodate different perspectives, value collaboration. Follow the educational philosophy established by the school board, which reflects the values of the community. Have a thorough knowledge of and successful experience in the school district management practices. Have a thorough, thorough knowledge of and successful experience in school finance. And work cooperatively with the school board, provide options and recommendations. And it was kind of flipped where majority said previous super, uh, superintendent experience is not preferred. Is it all? So, with that, so strong majority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Just to recap, there's at least three or four that are there continuum are. here. Yep. yep. There's yep. There are the three: the act of the honesty, um, be a people person, and develop and direct an effective leadership team. Both sides um, said that that was important. Um, and then there. It was selected as um, number 11 and 12 and 21 were the next highest ones. And these are what I'm talking about. Thank Again, because the numbers will make a little more sense now. One, three, and seven consensus. Okay. And then the board had five, six, and 19. And then the top three were 11, 12, and 21. Those came in at six and seven, and then um, there was a tie for five on eight and nine. Those came in lower. Yeah. 
this will help us a lot putting that brochure together. Useful. Based in your experience, is this fairly typical of a community when you see these things? Or some consensus, a lot of consensus, something? I would say there's typically a lot of consensus, which um, the things that even are not 100% line, there's still some continuity in those areas um, so that there can be a blending of the different criteria together to hopefully then balance what the board was saying and what also the feedback everyone else is saying. Um, so I, I think it's pretty consistent that there's the consistency, 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 uh, <laughs> regarding what the board says and then also what the public says regarding um, that criteria. And, and I think I would just add that any any superintendent should understand that to some degree, the board's priorities will be a little bit different than some staff members. They won't, they won't you know, coincide all six, but I think it's a good sign that half of them are. So you, you know, you have a, you, you share a common philosophy but it's normal that some would value certain things more than others. So it looks right to me. Good. So then going back to that final question, uh, the board was saying that you would prefer someone with prior experience. Um, in what we've seen um, regarding that question, some boards will be steadfast and say that prior experience is a, it has to be, it's a required, must have previous experience other boards will fall on a preferred. And so then that allows you to cast a wider net with individuals. For example, I may be assistant superintendent somewhere or um, and not have that quote title of superintendent, but I may fit your leadership profile and I may have what you consider would be very close experience that would align that you'd like to see. So if you have the preferred, then that person then could possibly come into the pool versus the must. And so that would be um, something to take into consideration as to is it going to be a must or a preferred for the prior superintendent experience. In making a statement, is that a question or are you looking for? That would be something that would be have to be decided tonight or on the 28th. <laughs> so you can either um, discuss it tonight and make a decision <coughs> or if you feel that you would like to have a little time to mull it over, you can then make that decision um, on the 28th because what we will do is you can put something in right now it's a holding place as previous superintendent experience is referred or required and then depending on what the board decides that would be inserted for your brochure this is an interesting perspective to share here in my research and getting ready if you think of all the schools in the high Wasa valley believe all your conference schools only one currently has a superintendent who had previous experience. And that surprised me. I was surprised to see that. You would typically think of your size school as like a second step or, or, but every HVL school but one, their current superintendent was a first time superintendent when they took that position. So it's not out of the realm. And I, and I don't think you necessarily can say that it will suffer, but on the other hand, Experience is always nice, so, but you know, just a perspective. We've had our, our last three soups. One had a, a wealth of experience coming in here, Mr. McGuire. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Sesker had some experience, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. And this was Beth's first first venture, mm -hmm. and they've all served our purposes quite well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like you, I always feel like there's a tiered system mm -hmm. where we're step two, maybe step three sometimes mm -hmm. along the path. but. I was one who voted for um, experience, but boy, <laughs> yeah. it's just one of those that uh, you know we've we've had good experience, and there's a, a short time ago there was conversation that the the pool was dwindling, <coughs> if you will, of superintendent candidates. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, Mr. McGuire probably had sixty, mm -hmm. and I would bet Beth would have been half of that amount. What do you see? Uh, some of this, um, these first-year superintendents, maybe because um, there's just um, not a wealth of them out there. Can you speak to that at all? I I think um, it's you know there are there are, there are a number of factors, but there's no question in all of education 
those of you that are hiring finding the same thing. There aren't as many people in the field of education as there were, say, 25 years ago, whether it's a teacher, whether it's an administrator, or whether it's a superintendent. So, so right off the bat, it's true, there are, there, there are fewer. Um, and I, I think uh, there, it, it just, and, and again, it's just like it used to be when you were coaching or anything else, you worked your way up. Well, it, it isn't so much that way now. And maybe we do a better job of screening our applicants and saying, you know, this person is ready to take, you know, to take it on. So um, don't really know that there's any one reason, but I think the numbers are probably as big a reason as any. And I don't know, Amy, what you think. But. Yeah, I think it goes back to um, there are just less people. Mm -hmm. Well, I was one of the ones that put experience, yes. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't think we should, I, I think preferred would be more um, appropriate just so we don't rule out an excellent candidate just because of the, you know, like you said, maybe they were the assistant to the superintendent. That's a lot of knowledge right there. So, I don't know. Same as me. I, it's like, a, it's it preferred, I would prefer it, but... I, not I'm not, game. it's not a game. Yeah, it's not going to rule it out for me. Yeah, I said yes, preferred, but would consider other candidates with administrative experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also uh, marked it as yes for experience, but I understand the preference. But I think going back to these questions in someone that is maybe a principal and having that opportunity because I think we were all looking for an opportunity at some point in life, but how do you really come to understand what these mean in someone that has not been in the role? So that would be the challenge when you go that route. And I think that's where we would be leaning on you in the questions and how those come out and how to draw that type of information out of those candidates. So would you say that's a preferred for you, but not Yeah, it would be a preferred, change. but looking for some help and guidance. Sure. If you're preferred. not going to get an experienced person, how do we, how do we rectify some of those uh, things that we Right, think are because you know, we do <laughs> right. have consensus on some of these things right. between the community, and we want to make sure we hit on them. I guess I was the only one at the table that didn't think experience was absolutely necessary. Um, it just says previous experience. It doesn't say they were successful <laughs> at it. That's true. Um, I think I, I, I agree with what everyone has said about making sure that we are taking from the largest pool possible. And I think the way that the process is set up, looking at what our criteria is, I think we're going to get, whether they have experience or not, the best candidates for our particular set of needs. Um, but I don't think that previous superintendent experience is absolutely necessary. So if I'm here, I'll go back to the preferred. <laughs> Sorry. So we will insert that into mm -hmm. um, there. Then what we will do is take and uh, massage these um, things into your hiring criteria and put those into here. And then a copy will be sent back to Lori. And Lori will get that, that out uh, for you to look at prior to the January 28th board meeting to say yes, that's <coughs> what we were thinking, or um, no, that's not what we were thinking. And so we you think if, if preferred is in there, that, that chases people? I don't think so. I think it um, opens the door for those that are looking for that first opportunity, maybe, that haven't had the title of superintendent, um, but they have all the background um, and they're looking for that opportunity. But where if you say it's a required, I've not met the minimum requirement <coughs> to apply for that job. Okay. I think most candidates know, and having been a candidate, that you know that someone with, you know, who has previous experience may have some of, may have a bit of an edge on you. I mean, that's understood. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it'll be a negative. So in your booklet, um, we're on page five, so also something that you'll need to think about 
is on the back of the brochure, it says salary and contract, which aligns with page five, talking about um, what should the announcement say regarding salary. Um, we've seen kind of um, a trend in school boards uh, selecting to put in a salary range. So then that way those individuals that are looking know that uh, that's within what I'm looking for or not. They may say, you know what, this is my minimum and what they're willing to pay is not going to meet those needs, etc. So then that helps um, I didn't attract those individuals that are looking for um, the hiring criteria that fit your need and then also the salary requirements. So that would be something that you'd want to take in consideration is looking at how to um, word that language as to what you'd like to see for a salary range. And in your packets, there is a multicolor sheet, which is information gathered from the Department of Education website. And I think we can go to this one. They don't know. What we also have for your comparison is um, the current year, all of the schools in your conference need to be up. Um, and this is probably something that should have strong consideration. Um, and I, they are listed by size of district, so that there's no order in terms of better or worse or anything else, you know, just by size of district. A couple more to give to the public. You know, I'm always kind of conflicted on this. Um, is this a requirement, an encouragement um, that you're asking us to to essentially uh, look over the parameters of benefits and wages so we can post them on? Well, we're not necessarily benefits, more or less it's a salary. And so what a lot of boards have gone to is putting out a minimum or a range just so that it's out there as to what the salary compensation is um, so that the individuals that are applying know what kind of to expect that this is the highest that they're going to go and I am already making that I'm looking for the next step or whatever um, so that they would they would have that information to help them decide whether or not they would like to be considered for the we're looking for something to fill this. Mm -hmm. yep. On your brochure, the salary and contract piece, we're looking to what what you want that to say. And it doesn't have to be tonight. Again, mm -hmm. it's a consideration. Um, you don't have to put something in if you don't want to, um, but it's there. And and again, we run the chance of uh, potentially people saying, oh, they're not even close to salary. I'm not interested. Or wouldn't that be a factor? We have to weigh everything that we offer. <laughs> I know, I know. And yeah. uh, there's so many good things about our school and uh, yeah. about our community. Mm -hmm. um, I think a range is a good idea. I will say one thing that um, <coughs> in previous experience that someone may apply thinking um, and the salary is not discussed at all, that I was looking for thirty or 40000 more. Well, we just can't afford thirty or 40000 more. And so then that individual then withdraws from the process and he or she may be into the final round of interviews at that time. And so this way it's up front. They know exactly uh, what the range is. So if it falls within what they're looking for. Would, would people go to a site to gather this information if we didn't include it so we're not really 
I mean, this is this is public we will, information. We will include this. So basically, it would say hypothetically um, a salary range of fifty to eighty thousand is what would be posted. This information would not be posted. This is to help you as you're thinking about what that salary range might look like. Correct, but I guess my question MTA, was, if, is this public information yeah. that they, that any superintendent potential candidate could just go online and say, oh, that's about what they paid, huh? Yep, the MD website, um, they have a report that they can go to, and then some districts have the information posted on their website, some um, you just have to request the information. But if you, if you contact the school and ask, they'll have to share that information with you. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My conservative side is coming through. Do you have? I think opinion? it's I think it's pretty standard to provide a range. I think it is a turnoff if people don't know ahead of time what they can anticipate. Um, I and I think it it and it says it here too. Salary not less than or salary will not exceed or if you say what the actual number is, people that think it's too low might not even apply and then if we end up paying more than that we might have missed out on potential candidates because they didn't think we were going to pay enough because we set a, a, a top a end set. but i think if you if you provide a range it, it again helps with the overall pool of candidates and i think if you look at job postings now a lot of times the ones that get the most interest are ones that do include some salary information. Mm -hmm. And it would be commensurate on experience too. Mm -hmm. yeah, the yeah, within the range. Mm -hmm. I think if they've got access to it, I, I'm not in favor of it, but uh, whatever you folks decide, I'm with. Well, Bob, I, I think you've been on the negotiations committee multiple times, right? So the salary is one piece of it. And if you look at a few of these, you know, health is a, is a big part that's going to be something that's going to have to be negotiated. And so creating that range is probably a better tool for us that you have, they're going to take it in salary, they're going to take it in health care. Yeah. Something to think about. Mm -hmm. You know, we... We always need to move forward. Our timeline is tight. I don't think this is a game changer for anyone, including me. If you want to put in a range, that that's fine with. It's, what is that range? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's your decision. <laughs> question one answered. Question two is still to be answered. <laughs> what would you think? You, you want to? Probably 125 on the bottom, <clears throat> looking at the other schools. Um, maybe 145, <clears throat> but, or, or we have to consider what we can afford. But. Now keep in mind the numbers here are 18, 19. You'll be hiring something for someone for 19, yeah. 20. Just, yeah. just clarifying. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure that... Anyone well, have if you look at the people? salary on the uh, insurance, it's like 136, really. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's also with eight years of experience. With experience. You know, so take for example the Zamboda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the real salary is one twenty five, but how much experience do they have? Oh, six. Would you like to include so, a number this week? Yeah. Would you wanna wait till the upcoming yeah. meeting? I, I and you don't have to take action on it tonight. It's more of a, a thought process. The biggest yeah. thing is we've yeah. agreed that we want to put we something want to put in a there. range, but yeah. maybe that we can is. take a little time to yeah. dig into and what so, that range should be. Um, well, it's fine with me. I think I would discuss yeah. discuss a range yeah. at the next to come to a conclusion at the next meeting. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're going to do it. Well, put, it sounds like I'll put 125 to question. Is that kind of. Well, it should be lower on the bottom because yeah. that's six years' experience that Goodhue has. So, depending on if you get somebody right up, you know. So we'll put, 15 or we'll put it at the holding spot. Well, yeah, I think you're. Just know that it's a range yeah. that, we'll, that we're going to we'll put a range. range. Yeah. Some, I'll just throw this in. Sometimes 
you just got this put in front of you. Sometimes as you look at it longer, it, it makes a little more sense and you maybe come to a little bit better number. I'm not saying that that's not a, mm -hmm. the right number, but I mean, I, I my own thought is it might be worth taking time to look at it. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you might want to consider, we're, we're looking at our specific area but we might want to look at what, the, what other openings there are and what their range is of schools that are comparable in size and need because if we're going after the same candidates, we want to make sure that we're competitive with those other openings. It's not just about our specific area, but mm -hmm. this, this is a statewide, from what I understand, a statewide search. So we want to make sure that we're going to be competitive with other communities of our size in terms of range. And it might end up being, I mean, maybe it'll, but maybe it'll be lower too. So that, that's something we might want to take into consideration. If there's current postings out there um, that are similar, that would give us something to work from. Well, I guess a thought I had too is you know, going back to the experience question. If you have a principal that's looking to take that next step, how does that fit into the salary range what they're currently at that makes it enticing for them to put themselves out there. And so I think they, at least one of that more situations that come to my mind where that individual was making the same as the incumbent or more when they took it on as their first two superintendent position. Um, so it was not um, a lower salary, it was either the same or a higher salary. I'm not saying that that will be the case, um, but that has happened. And the money to me always seems so relative. If you're um, if you're an eighth in Minnesota, $125,000 is just a lot different than a Cannon Falls $125,000. We have a high cost of living here where it puts those numbers relatively different at the same time. Somebody's 140 is somebody else's 120. So um, yeah. I get a little nervous about going low. I respect what Anna's got to say as well that, um, you know, we're in competition for other districts, but at the same time, uh, cost of living means a lot. Mm -hmm. Give us till the next week. Yeah, we'll we have a placeholder. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So just a quick review um, regarding this brochure. We will take the leadership information that we gather tonight, massage that, put that into the profile here. Uh, we'll be seeing superintendent's experience is preferred. And then on the back side, um, that yes, there'll be some type of range. There will be further discussion at the next board meeting, but the thought process right now is that there will be a, a range included in the brochure. Um, and this information then we'll get back to Lori uh, so that she can get it out to you before the January 28th. Board meeting. Questions, comments, concerns about the brochure? And again, if there's anything that you feel um, really strongly that should be added or deleted, let Lori know and she can get that um, information to us before the 28th and we can make those changes. That means everyone got something for her, please. I'm sure you have. If you can think of something that, you know, should be considered or included or excluded for some reason let laurie know she can contact us and we'll, um, the uh, school district points of pride uh was developed i pulled uh, a, a number of things off the website and then i worked with beth uh, beth and i worked together on that and, and talked about some things but um and she was at the leadership conference and we were calling and during breaks and you know that darn msba they don't give you any breaks <laughs> No, but uh, she was very helpful. And, and your website, by the way, um, just for what it's worth, uh, I really commend your website and whoever develops that. It's a, it's an excellent resource. I found it to be uh, a nice resource, and I got a lot of information off of it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Just one thought I had on the, just under the, the search. Um, I guess the impression that, that I took from reading it is that Beth served in the capacity of superintendent for 14 years. So we should reword that so that it has, is it the 14 year superintendent? Okay. I also had I, one more. Mm -hmm. 
She what? She been superintendent Lori for um, eight years, eight eight years. years. Mm -hmm. and so just clarification. Mm -hmm. That helps to have the reader tell us what they think of. Because you're right, that's what it kind of looks like. Mm -hmm. And it's minor, but Mr. Hodges, ramp up is, that's 6 through 12, right? It is a 6 through 12 program. Yeah, so the program oh, in here, it says high school. So it's 6 through 12. But it is 6 through 12 for, huh. does the college readiness. Okay. Yep. Very good. <clears throat> I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if it was sixth or seventh, so I just wanted to yeah, make sure. Cool. Yep, okay. that's what I thought. And the final bullet point under the points of pride, going back to your comments, speech should be added. Mm -hmm. okay. Are there some FFA champions? I think there might. I think you're correct. Okay, so speech and FFA. FFA. FFA yep. Even that, I can't do that. Yep. So again, so the work in progress until Monday. <laughs> Draft. <laughs> so then hopefully we'll get it finalized on Monday. <laughs> All right. All right. So the rest of this booklet, this viral bound booklet, is kind of things that will be taking place in the future. So this will be referenced in addition to another book that, that, that will be coming. Um, so we'll talk about um, making sure that we get the information out <coughs> as best as we can to cast that wide net for you. Um, the interview process, something that you'll need to want to take in consideration. Again, it doesn't have to be decided tonight. It's um, going to be probably discussed more on the 28th meeting is um, if you want to do a non-board member member interview committee so if you want to incorporate having non-board members also um, participate in the interview process what will that look like um, so that will be something to think about so that we can discuss it in more detail on the 28th and then get things finalized before the first round of interviews actually start because if you have non-board members participating we'll want to make sure that they also go through the interview training also so that everyone's uh, on the same page as the do that do not ask questions and those types of things okay All right. and then um, we'll work with you to craft interview questions based on your hiring criteria so going back to bill's comment of making sure that we're fleshing out that those things that um, highlight their past experiences and or um, re related experiences regarding um, the hiring criteria in those areas that you've identified for the first and second round of interviews and then uh, reference checking we'll do some preliminary reference checking but we always um, encourage the board to do their own reference checking and that usually will take place between the first round of interviews and the second round of interviews and so you'll need to identify who is going to take care of that so again it doesn't have to be decided today but start thinking about who that individual might be um, that will be conducting the reference checks of the two three four people that you want to be back for second round of interviews and then um, from now until the deadline, we'll take care of getting information out to everyone, letting know about the vacancy, collecting all the information, answering questions that the candidates may have. Um, if we don't know the answer, we'll probably reach out to Lori and she'll direct us who we need to uh, get in contact with regarding those questions. We'll be monitoring um, to make sure that people are getting their paperwork in. A lot of times somebody will initiate submit and there's things missing so we just want to make sure that we're following up and saying um, do you have all the information in that the completed file can be passed on then to you the board for your review and then the interview process so tonight we did a lot of discussion and not a lot of action um, taking place a lot of the action will actually take place at your next meeting where you'll be taking action to finalize and approve um, the brochure and within that brochure then will be the leadership profile and the salary range and then we talked about the stakeholder engagement piece as to when those will take place right now we've kind of saved the week of February 11th so working with the staff to figure out what days and time works best to have those meetings it's going to be before school after school um, an evening community engagement piece, a luncheon community engagement piece, trying to figure out what's going to work best so that we can get the most people 
involved in that process as possible for you. And then also the one-on-one -on -one interviews. Um, so tonight, you'll need to start thinking about, um, you mentioned that you wanted to have community one-on-one -on -one interviews. So we're gonna ask that each board member provide us with two names and their contact information on the 28th. Um, let them know that you're doing that. Uh, actually, I should say, ask them first if they would like to be contacted. And then if so, um, someone from MSBA will contact them and do a one-on-one -on -one interview with them regarding the search process. So we're asking each board member to give us two names of community members. And then um, at the 28th, they'll discuss the staff um, as Bruce alluded to, the one-on-one, -on -one, how that's going to take place. But um, it's a little bit easier to get in contact with staff because we know where you're at. <laughs> um, regarding the community, it's a little bit harder. We don't have their contact information. So that's what we're asking you to start thinking now ahead of time who um, it is you'd like us to contact and then provide that information to us. And that would take place on... That would take place that week, the week of, the, of the February 11th. And no. if they're not available, we can do phone interviews if they don't want to do it in person. Um, again, we're pretty flexible. We're trying to look at people's schedules. And these are the questions that you gave us? that you'll be asking the or is there yeah. okay yeah. yeah we try to be consistent nope that's, <laughs> yeah. it's just good to know so yeah. it's okay for us to give that to the people ahead of time or do you would you rather you can if you want to it's not necessary but you don't, it's not necessary. We don't have to but you don't have we to can if we want to okay if you have somebody like if somebody is wondering and, yeah yes. or wondering well, what are they going to ask them yeah. they can be a little more prepared mm -hmm. so. And then another thing to think about is what role um, you'd like your current superintendent about to take throughout the process. Um, so that's something that you'll want to think about and then um, the 28th kind of decide as to what role, if any, um, that you'd like to have her um, in throughout the interview process or the search process, I should say. And we've seen it all over the board. So that's a local decision for you to decide. Okay. So tonight, the one action item that I will need from you is to approve the survey so that we then can get a link to Lori to get on your website. Then we can get information to your newspaper and the um, radio so that we can get information out to the public to let them know that the survey is live. Well, do we need to add it to the agenda? Um, oh. <coughs> okay. That's right. That's right. We're a small town board here. We'll figure this out. Um, I need a motion um, to add the approval of the superintendent search survey to the agenda. We need that motion. I make a motion. A second. Motion and a second by Katie. Other discussion? All in favor of adding the superintendent search survey to our agenda say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Now we're looking for a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the superintendent search survey. Okay. Motion by Katie. Second. I'll second. Seconded by Bill. Other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. So then as I alluded to, next week is your big week. <laughs> and you have a lot of things. So we will uh, get that brochure updated and everything to you. And then um, you'll finalize your community engagement pieces, the dates and times for those. Um, and those will take place. And again, then we can work with uh, Lori to get that information out to everyone so that they know when they can come and provide that feedback to everyone. And then um, I think that's the brochure, which includes everything. And then stakeholder involvement. And then non board member um, interview, making between two from the lines. 
So will you carry uh, carry the ball for us throughout the whole process, or will your your people change for us, Bruce? Uh, there'll be one more person, Dave Thompson, the superintendent, sure. uh, because once the actual interview phase hits, I'll be gone. But Dave has actually been through that, so and they don't necessarily tie together. So I'll be I'll be through it the whole thing in terms of now the information you gave us tonight, and when we screen applicants. And then I'll they'll need to bow out because I'm gone. But that's at the point where it turns into interview, and I'll just share my information with Dave. It should that, that I don't think you'll see a, a bump at all. So long term stewy soup. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, yeah. experienced and and uh, with, with, with uh, Stewartville for too many years. Went to high school. And then Sandy and I from the MSBA yeah. staff will mm -hmm. be the two individuals. Yep. Um, one or other, other of us will be working with these. So at our next regularly scheduled board meeting, this will be one of our agenda topics, and we're going to have a light, a light other agenda. This will fit us pretty well, I think. Anything else for us this evening? No, I'm just excited to work mm -hmm. with all of you and yeah. keep things rolling. And any other comments from from our folks, from our supporters here? Team, do you have anything to add? If not, I would look for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Bill. <coughs> Second. Second. Second by Anna. All in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Opposed? We are finished. Thank you for coming. Thanks to everyone. I would just thank all of you for the input you gave us tonight. That's going to be very helpful. I appreciate your time and being here, and we'll be talking more. <laughs>